Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of these Serious Pals. My name is Chris, and today I am joined by your best pal. You know him as Jordan. <laughs> His dad calls him Little Peepers. <laughs> Little Peepers. <laughs> Jordan, welcome to the show. Hey, what's up, man? How's it going? Great. Little Peepers, I like it. Well, you're here today. Today you are going to drive the ship. Yeah. It's a little uh, driving the ship. It's a little thing for next week, a little wink at next week's episode. If you're hearing this in the States, um, this is going up the day before Halloween. No, I think mine will be a week before Halloween. This is uh, the week before Halloween, yes. And then the next episode will be the day before (laughs) Halloween. Spooky season. Spooky season. And today we got a spooky story to go with the spooky season. But first I'm going to ask you, I want to ask you about... What you remembered, there was a big thing, especially when we were in, uh, when we were coming up, Mm -hmm. we're bringing it up, you know, uh, with trick or treating. And what do you remember when you're trick or treating as a kid, little kid, little wee, little wee peepers walking around out there? Uh, other than it being like, you know, fun, like one of my favorite times of year, it was that the, People were either like putting razor blades in candy. Oh my god, I was going like to say the same. That's what I was going to bring up. Which I don't think I remember looking it up. Like that's never. It's only. I don't think it's ever happened. Maybe, yeah, maybe well, once. Maybe so once. That's exactly what I'm talking about. There's another mystery, and I was thought I was like, this is. I, I remembered looking through all the. You know, when you get home, you have all your candy, and you spread it all over the ground. Your mom's like, we got to look through everything, look yeah, for yeah, little yeah. cuts, yep. and, and you're just like, yep. dude, this sucks because yeah. I just want to eat, eat candy. candy. Yeah, yeah. And so you had to go through every little piece, and of course, you got a, a thousand pieces of candy. But I looked it up, the story of why we did that, and it was in 1974, a guy, supposedly this is what they trace it back to, mm-hmm. poisoned his son with cyanide, uh, he put cyanide in his pixie stick and killed his eight-year-old son. Jeez. I don't know, I, I don't really know if they really go into like the backstory of his like, you know, that type of divorce thing or something, like something okay. like that. Like the guy must have been, obviously was messed up. Yeah. And he had some problems. But like... That's what it all went back to was that was like a huge thing and back in the seventies and it kind of just went th- and obviously people just thought it kept on going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh through history. Even to this day. I, I mean I don't I don't really know if it's still a thing. Do yeah, do, do people still check candy? I mean, I don't. I don't uh, should I? I don't Because like I mean I look at it and go, okay, candy. Yeah, yeah. I also try not to go to enemy hunt because I got little kids and I'm like, we don't need it. I'm still I got still candy from last year. I just really? take it and give it to my students. It's hmm. all gross and old. They're like, "What well, does this taste like?" I'm like, "Shut up! It's free candy." <laughs> do you want candy or not? Yeah. <laughs> do you want, do you want to ride the dragon of sugar or not, yeah. kid? Eat it. Yeah. I mean, you're sleeping anyway because it's high school. Anyway, man. So today we're going to talk about I forgot about that too, something about. something even more spooky than poison candy. I don't know. Actually, it's poison candy sucks for all, but this is kind of sucks for these guys, people that were involved. <laughs> So where are we going to go today? Where are you going to take us? Where are we going to peep into? So hold on. I, I, was, I just got reminded of something right before we started recording. It's a mystery, kind of. How how how, how do you, say you're, you're taking off your shirt, T-shirt at the end of the night. How do you take it off? Do you, do you go arms crossed, pull it up over your head, or do you just go through the collar? I go down. I pull it down like a, like a skirt. I just feel better that way. All my, all my necks are all like shoulder yeah. length now, but... Uh, I don't know. I just, I don't know everything I even noticed. So I, so maybe I maybe grab this and pull out that way. So I just started subcon like I think subconsciously I've noticed I've been doing it off cross hand, not cross hand. I've been going like through the collar of my shirt. I'm like, man, my uh, my shirt collars are like you know t-shirts stretched being, like out. stretched out. That's what because I have like I hate a that. big Charlie Brown head. But like I started like paying attention and like when we watch stuff on like TV and like movies, I see how people take their shirts off and they always do the. Crisscross. Well, that's like that's like accentuate the. Ass. Yeah, but then I, you know, then I was like, a normal person's like, oh, my, my tubby belly. <laughs> I don't want to show that to anybody. <laughs> well, I asked Kelly, my partner, and she's like, no, I, that's how I do it. I feel like it's how most people do it. So I try to do it. I just, I think I do the one hander. Like, whoosh. I couldn't do, I couldn't do it. I just I got just, stuck in my head. I don't know. Oh. I, I am. Try this. Try the skirt method. Just pull it down all the way down. Hey, what's, my that call, what's that called when you sleep with? What's it called? Macho sleeping macho. <laughs> I don't know what that's from, but it's like sleeping you, macho. It's whenever you sleep just with a t-shirt and socks on. That's it. Oh, uh, like like uh, like Donald Duck. I guess. I don't know what it's from. Someone told me that recently, or some point in history. <laughs> some point, no. <laughs> some point in the history of human humankind. Someone so yeah, told me this. Well, that's my own personal mystery. Um, but today we're going to talk about 
Mystery of the Shirt. Yes, Mystery of the Shirt. Today's question I pose to you, Chris, and, and our two listeners, is how do the Trekkers <laughs> at Dialatov Pass die? Trekkers Dialatov? 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 It's Russian. Dialatov? I'm going to be messing up a lot of, like, the deals with, like, r- r- Russians and uh, their names and areas. I'm going to be messing this up a lot, but I think it's Dialatov? 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 Dialatov Pass. Dialatov Pass. How do they die? So... Um, the LF Pass is an incident that took place in 1959 in the Ural Mountains. So the Ural, Ural Mountains, 19 what? 59, the Soviet okay. Union. Okay, the Ural Mountains kind of go north to south. They provide a natural uh, barrier between Asia and Europe, but mostly it goes through Russia, or this time the Soviet Union. Uh, so it took place in 1959. Uh, nine current and former students from a university went on a trek but for failing to check in, were later found to be dead. So this is this is 1959. Yes. College students, college students, yes, from Russia. They're all Russian, Russia, yes. Okay. Also, all Soviet Union students. Um, they. What makes this a mystery is not the fact that they went and did this, not that they died, but it's how they died and okay. how, how their bodies were found, because none of them made. So it So they're back in alive. the mountains. Yeah, they're in the mountains. So the school, they were camping. The university is lo- the, they they were studying at is located. Right outside this mountain range, and they decided to do this trek of cross country skiing and hiking. Okay, in this mountain range, something I would never do. No, I hate cold. Yeah. I don't mind camping. I like camping and hiking and stuff. But like you say, there's snow involved, right? This is like yeah. a snowy area. Yes. It's mountain yeah, yeah, area. Yeah, yeah. It's, I guess it's Russia's always seems to be cold. Right, and I'm going to go into a little more details of what's what's going on like this this time of year there. But um, so what happens was they went on this trek. Nine, these nine kids, then they're early to mid twenties. Except for one other person, I'm going to go into that a little bit later. Uh, so, kind of an overview is that the tent, their tent, they didn't check in when they're supposed to, and their tent was found. Check in with who? They were supposed to come back, send a telegram to some of like their classmates and like friends and okay. family. So, like, like hey. a safety thing. Yeah. Uh, their tent was found, but it was, it was cut open, not from the outside, but from the inside. They found some of their valuables are still in there, but no bodies were found. So this is the 50s. 1959. No, Soviet Union. Paint me a masterpiece, will you? Paint me a picture of what a tent looked like in the, the 50s. So since there, I mean, there since there was nine of them, they, it was like, you know, how you picture a tent, not like you wanted to Was it like the, nylon or were they using like a different type of material? I would assume it would have been like, you know, earlier, not not by today's standards. Yeah, I guess that nylon was invented in 39, 1939. It's a weird thing to know. I, I, don't, I, never, I wouldn't know that. Uh, it's because... Oh. Yes, I just, yeah. It's, but things were found inside. They were evenly placed there. It seemed organized, but no one was, no one was to be found. So that's just to paint a picture of what I'm going to be talking about. Yes, I see it in my mind. Yes. <laughs> so the background of this, it all starts with a student at the, at the Ural Polytechnic Institute. Again, this is near the Ural, Mount, Ural Mountains in Russia. Ural it's Mount. like, it's west, like west central Russia. Okay. West Central. So yeah. is this like Russia? I mean, this is like the towards like Siberia side. This is is Ru- Siberia on the other side. West, west. Well, more towards Europe. More towards Europe. Yeah, okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's not all the way to the west, like the southern border of the Soviet Union, but it's like west, considered West okay. Central. So the starts. I'll give a little background. It starts with Igor Dyatlov. I don't know nice. if you remember saying that name, but there's a reason why we're using his. That so, name's used. So wait, do y'all love, like, this is the actual guy? This is a guy. Okay. And then this, 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 this pass, pass is named after him? After him. Whoa. Uh, How he's, convenient. Yeah. <laughs> he inherited the pass. Yeah. Uh, he's a 23-year-old student at Euro Polytechnic Institute. Uh, this is in a city of Zervatlovsk. Zervatlovsk? Zervatlovsk. Okay. Now in modern day... <laughs> I, I tell you, to, like, the rest of the world seems to have this, like, <laughs> very fine-tuned tongue to say a lot of these yeah. words, like, especially in in Russia and French. Like, yeah. I don't know if it's, like, the English language is kind of, it's it's hard for other people to speak English, but, like, for me. But ours is, our language is bastardized. There's a lot of Latin, like, the Romance language. Is just a lazy? German. It's just, like, this weird okay, culmination of, like. German's another language I couldn't. Yeah. So maybe it's just, like, when you come to America, the language just got lazy. <laughs> <laughs> or, or not say lazy, but like 
it was muddled. Like it's like a melting pot. So all these like languages are yeah, and we're just like and like we kind of bastardize. Certain we're not going to listen to the man on how to speak. I'm going to speak how I want to speak. So I'll just yeah. say what I want to yeah. say. Just make up your own language. Exactly. It's American way. Screw it up. So I'm not going to try and pronounce this, uh, but it, again, this is this is Zervat Zervatlovsk. Uh, it's different named today in modern day Russia. But again, it's the Soviet Union. Um, again, it's west, located in West Central so the Soviet Union during the time near the Ural Mountains. Okay. Okay. So it's a mountainous area. Is this now that after the Soviet Union fell? Is this still part of the Soviet Union? Is just part of like one of those other one of the other countries? Uh, it's still part of the Soviet okay, Union. So yeah. it was that deep into it. Yeah. Okay. Um, in January, Igor, he was experienced skier and hiker. He did a lot of cross country skiing. He was uh, there's there's rankings for these people who do this cross country skiing and hiking in the mountains. Uh, he was grade two. The highest at the time you get to in the during Soviet Union was grade three. So by he thought by doing this this long expedition in the Euro Mountains, he could become grade three, which is again the highest ranking thing. He decided to, with a couple of our fellow university students, uh, we're gonna in order to get grade three, we're gonna do a three week, two hundred mile trip in the Euro Mountains. Hell no. Yeah. There's no way it's it, even if it's like even if it's just breezy out, I'm not going into the mountains because it's too cold. Yeah. I, I, you know, put me on a desert island. I'll try to survive all you want. I'll probably die. Oh, yeah. Survivor man style, but I'm not doing anything cold. But it's, I mean, it's pretty impressive. These guys are in their you know, early 20s and they're guys in and women uh, who go on the ship. They're in their early 20s. Again, they, they're from this area, so I guess they know how to, they know right. the terrain. Yeah. I mean, you grow up in that area. Yeah. Uh, but the these mountains aren't. They're tall. They get high elevations, but they're not like mountains that you think of. Like so, so they more like uh, Appalachian mountains in, in the United States, where they're. Uh, it, that's what it seems like. Yeah. There's no like tall peaks like yeah, the Rocky Mountains. Yeah, they're not doing ice climbing. They're not climbing up these things. It's more like a progressive sloping up and down of cross country skiing okay. and hiking along these things. But again, there, he decides to do this in January in Russia. It is, and the temperatures are going below zero. So like you still have to be you know good at what you're doing. Oh, of course. It's still, of course, very dangerous. Three weeks? Three weeks. is it be a three-week trek uh, with 200 miles. That's just that's just too long. Yeah. And too much. <laughs> Why would anybody want to do that? I mean, I guess it's I, like, it's in the 50s, yeah, the 60s, and I, I 50s. Think, I think, uh, it's not like they're playing Xbox and stuff. Right. Where, you know, it's like, oh, I'm going to sit home and play World of Warcraft, or I'm going to go walk through the mountains. But yeah, Because nowadays, we're just like, I'll just play Call of Duty. Sure. I mean, and, and the university he's going to, it's a, it's a, it's considered, it's like popular for engineering. So a lot of these kids that went yeah. there got recruited by the government to, into like okay. nuclear power yeah. and all that stuff. So they, you know, for free time, like, what do you want to go do? Atomic age. Let's go skiing for 200 miles. <laughs> do um, math and go skiing. That's what your whole life is yeah. about. Uh, so he uh, put together a team. Of uh, some friends of his, and um, the idea is they're going to reach the northern part of the region that they're in. Again, it's called uh, Zervadlovsk Oblast. 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 Hmm. I've heard that word said before. I cannot for the life of me actually pronounce it. I can hear it in my head, but I don't know how to make the words come yeah. out of my mouth. So they're going to end at the mo- at a mountaintop called Mount uh, Oderton. Okay. It was thought that. So in, in this region, there is a indigenous, indigenous group called the Mansi. So they're not really part of the Soviet Union. They're like they're, there's people that have been living there, like in the United okay. States, we have Native Americans. They're kind of their own thing. Uh, they kind of get left alone. But apparently, uh, Mount Oderton translates to in Mons in Mansi as "Don't go there." Okay, that's what was thought at the time. I think like, this has been debunked, but. Do you think you think that's a, be a good sign? Be like, hey, let's not go to this place. When makes a good story. Don't go there. Yeah. Do you think they named it so they're like, hey, we're going to call it this so you stay off our land, or was it debunked that that's actually not what it? It's debunked. That's not actually okay. what it means. I think it's more like I'm I mean, name my 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 road that. So I, think you had, on my road. I think as a result of what happened here was a cautionary okay. thing. Like, don't go to this place. It's like okay. doom. It's a bad idea. So him and these uh, other students. Submitted their proposal to their uh, university and that su- surrounding areas uh, athletic committee, uh, which quickly, surprisingly, approved of it in a matter of like a couple of days. So the, he submitted this in, in January. So this is like a committee and the university. Yeah, it's like an athlete, like athletic committee at the university. Okay, um, but I think they also needed 
Do they have competitions? A, approval from like that 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 state that they're in that that's something that's going to do. So is this like a competition type of thing where like this team went out for two hundred miles, this team did two fifty, they win. No, it was more it was more or less like it's something that no one has ever taken. They they decided the route they wanted to take and no one's ever taken oh, it before. Okay. Which again is just crazy to me that they're like, we're gonna go do this. And I mean you're in early twenties. Yeah. Every person in early twenties. You got some cojones. You're, you think you, the idea you're gonna live forever. I mean, in your early twenties, you are I would say in the nicest way possible, when you're in your early twenties, it's like you peak like around 14 and then you just it's all downhill to like the mid mid to late 20s and okay. then you start coming back to normal reality where yeah. like what's your puberty i understand <laughs> that the world's gonna kill up. me and like i'm not gonna be the richest person in the world and yeah. i'm not gonna be given like it's uh, and that might be a thing in modern society but like we are all especially now this is talking from a a, a, a male yeah. we are all dumb in our early 20s <laughs> there's a saying for that <laughs> yeah 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 uh so, <laughs> so igor had picked uh, six men and two women to go with him. Some of these people he knew directly. Some were just kind of friends of friends, but they all went to the university. But they all were they were students. Yeah, they all they all had that grade two okay. experience of a cross country skiing and hiking. So either they were students there or they recently graduated. But they all kind of knew each other through like circles. Is this the guy's like road trip? Everybody, let's road trip right yeah. now. He comes in, it's like Saturday morning. Yeah. You're like, dude, I got I got class on Monday. He's like, no road trip. We're going right now. We're doing it. So it's kind of like that type of thing. Yes. But it, I feel like a lot more preparation well, is yeah, needed for this. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so you picked uh, six men and two women. I mean, I filled out my car went on road trips. So I was like, we <laughs> yeah. got some we got some stuff at the gas station. We're fine. Right. Some Italian dressing in a hoagie. Just dump <laughs> dressing in your mouth and eat the hoagie. <laughs> yeah, I don't mess up my car. <laughs> so six men and two women uh, went with them. Uh, all students. They're all students or people that recently graduated. But this is, what, this is where things start getting weird. This is where conspiracy theories start coming in. So they're all in their early 20s. Ranged, I think, from like 21 to 23, 24. So the committee that is letting them do this and, and like saying, oh, yeah, go do this, they decide to allow one other person come. Okay, he's he's a man. He's in his third. He's like 37, 38. Is this like the field trip type of thing where this is the guy like? Well, so that's what I was like. Oh, maybe he's like he's like the chaperone. Okay. Okay. So he has that's experience as well. I think he is a he's a athletic teacher at the university. But none of these kids know him. He was also uh, a former. Uh, Which those kid, kids today would call this a creeper. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Makes sense. So he's a sport instructor at the university. He's a World War II veteran. Again, this is this, go- is, back, this is like this is kind of his background. This right goes after, in, yeah. This goes a little bit into like the mystery of why this guy's here. This, as far as conspiracy theories, what happens? World War II veteran at this time. I mean, this yeah. is like the Russians yeah, too. The guys he, are he, like he's like tatted up. Yeah, these are the guys like the crazy guys that went yeah. in face to face. Yeah. 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 Uh, they're the ones that, you know, basically won World War II. But again, no one knows who this guy is. But they go along with it because he's experienced. He does have some affiliation with the university. It's like, like okay, you know, whatever. We'll, we'll go with this. Uh, so there's 10 people all together. It's Igor, his friends, or some of his acquaintances, and this this older gentleman. What's the older gentleman's name? Uh, his older, the older gentleman's name was, um, thank you, Semyon. 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 Okay. Semyon? Semyon. S E M Y O N. I I think I saw that with a Z as well. Okay. Okay. So the the government and the universe approved this. The 10 of them set out on January 23rd. So during this time, as they leave, they have journals. They each have their own journal. There's a communal journal. They have cameras. They're taking pictures. They're journaling everything they're doing. So we know what's going on prior to them disappearing later on okay nothing seems out of the ordinary there's a few instances where they have to um they they rather than buying a train ticket they decide to hide under like one of the uh, like they, they, they hop on like the train, train hopping yeah the train hopping okay. yeah uh we know that over the course of several days they take a series of trains they take a truck try truck ride north uh to their actual starting point there they stocked up on food in this last inhabited area called Vizai. So this is the last place they come to. There's people. What's it called? Vizai. Okay. V-I-Z-H-A-I. Okay. So this is the last time they go to, this is the last place they can get food, they can restock supplies, that's the time they get an actual meal before they go completely on their own, out like where there's no like civilization around. Again, this is get to this, this mountain point. The plan was, 
So again, this is January 26th, I believe, 27th? 1959. So. 1959, okay. yeah. The plan was to come back to this town and then send, send a telegram to like their friends and family saying, hey, we're okay. It's a matter of like a couple, like a couple, three, three weeks possibly. Okay, we're, so the, so the telegram was to their family. Yeah, and, and people at the people. university, like, hey, we did our trek, we made it. Okay, and then we're, we're, gonna, we're alive, we're, we're going okay. back home. Because this is like the last place there's any kind of civilization. Last place to get food and, and stock. They left from there, come back to there, and they were going to go back home. And go home. back home, yeah. Okay. Through a series of trains and car rides and stuff like that. So the, by February 12th, they're like, hey, if you haven't heard from us, things might be, something might be wrong. So this is January 27th, January 28th. One of the trekkers that was part of this, Yuri Yudin, there's a couple of years, but his name's, his name's Yuri Yudin. He had to pull out due to health issues. He had rheumat- rheumatism? Like rheumatoid arthritis yeah. type of thing. Rheumatism. He had like some he had issues with the bad joint. He had apparently had like a, a kind of a heart problem. So he's yeah. like, I can't, he's like, my joints are killing me. I don't think I'm gonna make it. So he pulls out. Luckily for him, you know, this So how many do we have now? We're down to nine? Down to nine. Okay. So this save this guy's life, the fact that he had these yeah. this arthritis. So the twenty eighth, the other truckers, they are like people that part of the expedition, like we're gonna keep going. Or he could have been the one that saved the day. <laughs> it's kind of like a uh, what's that? What's that spaceship that went spaceship? <laughs> Apollo thirteen? <laughs> yeah, the space aliens up there. That one guy left. He got he got sick or something. Faked yeah, it. Right. He could have saved the day. We don't know. So, so they take off on the twenty eighth again. These mountains aren't necessarily steep. They're not like climbing and stuff like that. They're just cross skiing. But it is January. We're going into February. You're in the mountains in Russia. I mean, you have to be. It's cold. I mean, so like temperatures are going too. down to like twenty degrees below Celsius. Sweating and yeah. being freezing. Yes. This ah, oh, that would be hell. My personal, so other people might like it. So they leave this place on the twenty eighth. This is probably like the last time. So some people would say that these people have been seen alive. Uh, journals were found later by the uh, the people on this trek, the expedition. Uh, that on January, thir- January 31st, they had to stop to set up camp due to bad weather conditions. Okay. January what? 31st. Okay. They, they set up camp. Yeah. This is found in a journal. The, the, meanwhile, the whole time, they're very positive about everything. They're sad the year he left. But this they, is all from their journals. All from journals. And they, 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 they eventually did find cameras. were able to, to um, what's it called when you develop, develop them? Thank you. Develop them. So it seemed like everything was fine. Like nothing was out of the ordinary. So um, photographs, than, yeah. except for that like that one guy, Simeon, in the background, like looking at him like real weird, like behind <laughs> yeah. trees and stuff. <laughs> the, There's this one guy in so there. there is, yeah, there is something that comes up later on when we start going to, into theories about what happened to these people. But yeah, several of them had cameras, um, and only some of them were able to get developed. But again, nothing seemed out of the ordinary until the January 31st, when the last journal entries was like, we have to stop for the night because we can't keep going because weather was bad. Visibility is poor. One was bad. It's snowing really heavily. So January 31st, that happens. They have to stop. February 12th comes and no one hears anything. February 12th. Yes. So that was the Wait, date. Is January 31st, February 12th. Yeah. So February 12th is supposed to be the date that at the latest that they would send a telegram back to their friends or family or people at the university saying, hey, we made it back. On the 31st, they was a log entry about yep. setting up camp. Yep. And then nothing until I'm February 12th. pretty sure 12th. nothing. They weren't heard from like that so, was the last entry, but yeah, that were, entry, yeah, sorry, that entry was found, but like they didn't like no one heard anything. They weren't back at the town they're supposed to be in uh, to send word that they were fine. So generally, their family members, friends, the university starts to panic. They start demanding that a search party be sent out, but not until February twentieth, the search party gets sent out because they 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 had heard that there there were some bad. Weather going on, so maybe like 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 oh maybe they got postponed. They didn't make it in time, so they waited a little bit until the February twentieth. Because this would be three weeks. Yes. So at this point, the twelfth was the three weeks. Yeah. So people would Pretty think much, if, they, yeah. if they said three weeks, it could have been that was like what they expected. That's what they expected. Yeah. So it could have. I it, think everyone everyone so they're re- expecting it to take longer. Yeah. I think, I think everyone assumed like it being the middle of winter that it's possible that it get delayed due to bad weather because they're on, you know, they're on their feet and they're going on skis. They're not taking snowmobiles or like cars or anything like that. So like, like this is, 
So February 20th comes in, and then their family's like, all right, what's going on? We need, this needs to be like, we need to find- Eight our, days. Yeah, we need to find our family members, our loved ones. So the university, along with local authorities, that eventually the Russian government sent out search parties. So 59, I mean, there's telephones at this point. Yes. So, I don't, I don't, I mean- I mean, there's, so there's, tel- there's telephones, they can call people. It's not like it's, sure. they're writing letters. I, 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 and I think- the reason why they said we'll send a telegram is because the last place they stopped, like the last civilized town they were in, probably didn't have telephones because okay. you were getting in the mountains. So, but they did probably have telegram. So that's where they're like, we'll send you a telegram when we get back to this town. A telegram being through the telegraph? Yeah. Okay. But, it, I mean, telephones were a thing there, but probably not in this. Right. So I was wondering, like, it seems like just give them a call. Yeah, because they, they, in order to even get to that last town, uh, Bizai, I think it's called, they had to, like, take trains and, like, it took up a couple of days. They that alone was like a lot of mileage in there. This is a far off town. Yeah, they're, like they're going, yeah, they're, they're going past places that are, you know, are probably without that kind of technology, right. I'm assuming. 59, still not. Yeah. I mean, there's still places now that don't have yeah. things like that. So February 20th, the school sends out volunteers, most of who are students, which is kind of crazy, but then also local authorities get involved. I mean, young kids, just they can yeah. throw those away. <laughs> But uh, it wasn't until February 26th that on a mountain pass near Mount Kolat Sayakul. Oh, my God. That's a that's a whole thing. Do that again. Do it one more time. Kolat Sayakul is on February 26th. How many letters is in that word? It's two different words. Okay. But I'm, I'm a number. I, I, of course. Yes. <laughs> that's a com- That's like the common theme yeah. through all these episodes. Yeah. We butcher every word. So, so, yeah, we, sh- we, should do an, we should do an episode of us butchering people's names. Yeah, Six send in your names. <laughs> yeah. Where you're from. Of, of, of like things we've already done, done and talked about, like the Moogle Empire or and like, all that stuff. Put them all together. Yeah, yeah. Cut them together. Cut it all together like a blooper. Here's us being jackasses. So, Kalat Sakal. Uh, We're sorry the world. We're bad at speaking. <laughs> Which in Monsi, again, Monsi is this indigenous tribe. This means dead mountain. This is, wait, wait. So February 26th. Yes. This is the pass that they. Yeah, on a mountain pass near a mountain called Kolat Sayakul. In Monsi, which is the indigenous tribe in that area, that mountain in their language means dead mountain. And that's true? Or is that? That's, that is that's true. Another Apparently wrong. that okay. is true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, something's found. On, the, on, the, on this, on this, on this pass. Yes. And this is only about 10 miles from their destination where they wanted to go in the end, which was Mount. Okay. So this is Orton. like, this is like on the, this is supposed to be 10 miles to where they're going to end and turn and, around. End and turn around. Yeah. Okay. So they were close. I mean, 10 miles, I mean, still I, 10 I, miles. I mean, out of 200 miles though. Um, yeah, you're right. One of the univers- university's volunteers, Mikhail Sharavin. So they made 90 miles basically. More than that, yeah. Because it's 200 miles round trip, right? Oh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. About. Yeah. I mean, so yeah, they I made it like think about the 10 miles. Yeah. So then they were 100 miles back. They were close. 90 miles, though. And that's impressive. I would have made it 10 miles and been like. Two. <laughs> they'd have been dragging yeah. my body. Yeah. Once I got off the, the last truck in the like the last town, I'm like, yeah. I think I'm good. Yeah. I'm just saying here. All right. So one of the one of the volunteers, Mikhail Sharavin, finds a tattered tent protruding from the snow. Uh, in, in an interview with BBC, with a news journal, journalist named Lucy Ash in 2019, this uh, this article I found is like amazing. He, the, they interview like some of these people that are around during this time, mostly because of this guy, because um, he's one of the first people that found something. So he finds a tent, protruding from the snow. It's kind of caved in, covered by snow. <clears throat> I mean, this is how many days later? I mean, this could have been. This is February 26th. And this is the third. 31st was their last entry. So that would have been yeah. 26 days yeah. where there's just snow is piling up. Yeah. So I'm surprised they even found that at all in a yeah. place like this, I'd imagine. Um, uh, in this interview, he says he found the tent. Him and this other rescuer, rescuer that were with them looked inside and said if things appeared orderly. They saw some boots stacked up, which is kind of odd. Um, they saw some food that looked like there was recently been cut up, like they are getting ready to have dinner. Um, there was a lamp there, like a heated lamp or like a um, heating thing for them to, to use. But nothing seemed out of order other than the fact that there were no one around. Like, where were these people at? Uh, they found the route map in there, official papers, money, and a flask of alcohol. 
So this is where it kind of gets interesting because he noticed there was a, there's a, a cut made in the tent, but not from the outside, but from the inside. How do you know that? Did they say? They don't. I mean, they don't. I mean, they don't. I think based I mean, on the material. I would, yeah, I, would, I mean, I probably couldn't identify that, right. but like maybe I don't know. Maybe knows. I about just wonder things. how they or would even like, say like. This is how we know it's from the outside. Sure, yeah. And maybe because it, the puncture mark was going out. Oh, yeah. I'd imagine the way like the, the threading might have been coming yeah. off. Like, okay. Based on and that, it's probably maybe. frozen too. Yeah. So. Based on that, maybe. Plus, we don't know what material it is. And... Sure. Uh, and they said just this again. This is Mikhail uh, recounting what what he saw. So then, just outside the tent, he saw frozen footprints made by eight to nine people who were either wearing uh, socks, a single boot, or nothing at all. Okay, that seems going out. Okay, they're wearing socks or nothing at all. Yeah. So their boots are there. The boots are. He saw some boots in the tent, neatly piled all together. God. Which is, I don't know. That's not. Odd. That's not good. No, which is very odd. And the trash continued Did, five to ten meters, and then they disappeared. Just thinking this in my head like makes me cold and scared. Yeah. About. Just like anxious about something claustrophobic like and just yeah. like getting caved Snow, in on and yeah. like being alone and I don't know snowy feeling snowy death yeah. So they they realize in time like again I'm gonna jump out a little bit but they realize in time what they did was they they were they were off their mark of trying to like so they get like I said they're ten miles out from this mountaintop they're trying to get to because of the snow and how how windy and it was dark out and how snowy it got. They had to kind of settle out further than they wanted to ne- next to this mountaintop. This, okay. this, uh, oh my gosh, the thing I keep butchering, collapsed. So, what they end up doing is there's a slight slope. But again, these aren't like mountains like this. There's just like a s- slow grade. So, they decided to do was, and apparently, this is what you do in these kind of situations you build, you, you dig down, you build your tent into the back of the slope in order to prov- like, in order to prevent wind from yeah. hitting okay. you. So they, this is what they did, okay? Um, they saw that the cut came out, obviously, the other side because the other side of the tent was um, behind a wall of snow. Uh, so, they, again, they, they, the traction unit for 5, 10 meters, and then they just disappeared. And this is it didn't be nighttime, so they decide to take this alcohol and cheers. They, they're like, there's no way these people are alive. Here's to the deceased. But then the next day, during, during like, February 27th, it's daytime. They were able to follow more of the footprints. Um, and near the edge of a nearby woods, they found two bodies. Who ended, ended up belonging to two of the people on this expedition. Two of nine. Yep. Uh, again, I'm going to butcher these names. Georgie. I'm not going to try his last name. Uh, all right. Georgie Kravishen, Kravishenchenko. And another Yuri, this is a Yuri that stayed during Doroshenko. Doroshenko, okay. Okay. Both were near a, like a, a dead campfire. Again, this is on, on, on. So there's a campfire there. Along a tree line. Okay. Uh, the, the campfire had already passed, died. Uh, and the two men were only wearing their underwear. Okay. I mean. <laughs> out in the freezing cold. In the freezing cold. So it gets, you, you're, you're like, oh, they were not wearing their boots. Yeah. But they're also not wearing any of their clothes. Socks. And that just seems yeah. like hell. Yeah. So either they set this campfire or someone set it up, set it up for them. Okay. They saw, they noticed on a tree, some branches had been broken off. They were probably what they used to light this fire. And they don't know if the fire was from when they originally were camping or they, they don't know if they made it before they went to bed or after. The, yeah. It was, it was, they're, they're assuming after because it was so far away, like, not super far away, but it was like far enough away to be like, why would they... Make it all the way over here, then go all the way back yeah. to the tent. So later that day, three more of the missing group's bodies were found. Some are, and this, some are sprawled out in between the camp, the original camp where that tent was, and the tree line where they found those two other. So these are, these are another three between Another three those. people, yep. They were kind of like sporadically between okay. these, these where the camp was and the so two first bodies were five found. Five down. Yeah. One was Igor, the guy who this is aptly named after. Uh, the one that, love. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, you say better than I do, uh, as well as Rustam, Slobodin, and Zinaida Komogorova. 
So some of these people had clothes on. Thank God. They were in their underwear. Well, that's just not, the that's not part of body positioning suggested that they were trying to make it back to camp. Okay. The way they were facing, the way like they were kind of like, their so bodies had like. Making it back to the original camp. Original camp, yeah. Away, away from, from the, 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 fire. Like the fire, yeah. Okay. Uh, so did they fall those two that weren't wearing clothes out there and try to get them back? There's, and then they died on their way back? There's a, there's a theory that we'll, we'll okay. get to on I that. I want to jump ahead here. Uh, Rustam Slobodin had a small crack in his skull. Well, you don't want that. No. That's not good. It was later uh, seen as not a fatal wound, so they don't know what where it came from. They, do they know if it was from this trip or if it was something like I think when he was growing up? I think that's – well, that's the thing. Like, who knows, like, if, if it's, like, something happened to him, like you said, when he's younger or – Something happened during. This. I'd imagine it wouldn't be when it's younger. I know your bones grow like they, and they fuse and stuff like, like that. Like a little kid when they break, they break their like collarbone, which is a very common thing for yeah. little kids to do. Apparently, like that stuff just erases the old one and grows a new one. Yeah, I've seen it happen, but I'm not like I've, yeah. seen, I've seen it like go from like completely displaced to like a couple months later being like a totally new bone, and the old one that was displaced is gone. Like it erased uh, it. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, all right. Apparently, this though there was no actual scar. It was just like you could oh. tell, like there was a flint. So, like, so it's a new wound. Yeah. Um. So, so the skin was also broken, and the skull. Was, I th- I think I don't think the skin was frozen. Broken. I don't think the skin was broken. No. Like a blunt think. force type of thing. Yeah. So put some ice on that. Get this. Almost three months later, <laughs> on May fourth, the final four members were found. Wait, wait. May fourth. May fourth. Almost okay. three months later, from when the. F- from when the did um, these guys hang out the entire time, or they left? The guys that found the original five, uh, the people that found the original five, one of them I believe stuck around. Okay, and so the other ones, but but I also think at this point though, like the the actually I don't think they did. I think the students were like done at this point. Like this at this point, the, oh. the military were like we're going in. Okay, the, so like, the police. So this like, is like a like, murder you know, scene. It's yeah, like kind yeah, of like a this yeah, is an issue now. Yeah, a crime scene. Right. So May fourth, three months later. For, for, Final four members were found in a ravine 250 feet away from the initial tree where the first two were found. So okay. 252 f- feet away Further. from where Gregory and you were found, yeah. Further from... And so the, the idea is that since it's May, the snow had been melting, they could finally see, find these other bodies. And they were kind of laying in like in this ravine, there's water. Um, some were actually laying in the water. Which could have been frozen. Well, yeah, that, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. Uh, so, <laughs> it's not like they could have drowned, maybe because it would have been frozen. I yeah, imagine. There, there, I, there, there was a river, but that became a stream that became like a ravine. So Got who it. knows how like how deep this would have been? So these four: Nikolai, Thibo, Bignoles, which sounds kind of doesn't sound completely Russian. So there might be a, a French maybe parent. Okay. Uh, he had a fractured skull. And this is where it gets like kind of gruesome. Like the other ones, are just like oh, they maybe they die of hypothermia, which yeah. they end up saying froze to death. They died from hypothermia. But this is like when they find these bodies, like there's some gruesome stuff going there. So this guy had a fracture skull. Wait, what, did we find Sim Simeon yet? Sim Simeon. Uh, oh. So Nikolai had a fracture skull. Alexander Kolovatov's neck was twisted. He had a twisted sc- scar around his ear. Wait, wait, his neck was twisted. twisted. I don't think it was like. Like that, all the way around. But I the think circle. it was just like I think it was like clearly it had been like jostled and like like Looney Tunes spun sort of like he spins around his body <laughs> yeah. and spins around. Yeah. So it's clearly like some kind of again blunt force trauma happened okay. to him. Uh, the two other uh Lyadmila Dubanina and Semyon. Was that a Louis Mia was it was the other the second woman. Okay. Uh Semyon's the guy that the older guy that the creep was kinda hanging out with him. They both had uh, chest fractures, broken ribs. Both were missing both eyes. Okay. And Louis, Louis Mila, his tongue was missing. It was gone. And Sim Young had it in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> he got hungry, man. Uh, they were found wearing uh, the clothes this, of what is believed to be their dead companions. This sucks. So they were wearing the different cl- clothes? Were they different all, clothes. The other guys... So they th- so two guys were in their underwear. Yes, these four. These four were they wearing real clo- like were they wearing clothes? They were wearing clothes, 
it's believed that they took the clothes off of the other people who might okay. have died before them. I gotcha. Uh, interesting, though, Simeon was found with his camera on him, around his neck. So if they're fleeing this tent, as the people are saying, since a, a knife, the knife cut through the tent on the inside, they're fleeing something, why would he have his camera with him? Was he taking pictures of something he wasn't supposed to take a picture of? Got caught? Again, they're, 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 so they're, this is... February 1st through February 2nd is what they, they th- believe that these people died. January 31st is when they had to dig in, in, dig in to yeah. that, that slope. So the thing in February 1st, the, the night of, and the February 2nd is when they died in the middle of the night. So why, like, I don't I, was th- I think it's interesting. Why would he have his camera around him if they're, like, getting ready to go to bed? Or why would he take it with him to run away from whatever's, like, frightened them? To make them want to leave the tent. He's like one of those place. YouTube influences or like Instagram influences. <laughs> you like your the boy, first Simeon. Yeah. <laughs> Simeon up here. Simeon. <laughs> um, also, it should be noted that low levels of radiation were found on some of the clothes. How, how would radiate? So wait, we're talking about not like the common like background radiation. This is like obviously a Geiger counter yeah. type of like they... Not, they had a Geiger counter, and right. it was like, oh, it's it actually not tweaks it. Yeah, not not life threatening or anything like that. But like they had been, these clothes had been around s- some type of radioactive some material. material. Yes. Okay. Cold War. Cold War, baby. So yeah, Cold War alone. What a time like, to be alive. Like, yeah, like the 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 possibilities of what happened to these people can be numerous. Okay, so what if Simeon's camera shot out radioactive like? pictures like it was like laser it was like a special thing they were testing for oh, the yeah, military yeah, yeah, he took yeah. a picture and it like i mean who knows radioactive man. murder like hulked Hulk, like hulked them yeah i'm not i wouldn't like i'm not saying that's like he had one of these but like i wouldn't be surprised if that was something yeah they were testing. polytechnic institute he's testing something out yeah so these are all like yeah, so that's the thing it's a like thank Insanity you for bringing it up camera. like these people are like they're they're Some, studying to to be part of the the overall military, government yeah machine okay something with science technology um, Igor uh, was a uh, radio engineer. He would make uh, his own contraptions and go test them out in the wild. When so, you say radio, you don't mean radioactive. You mean radio as in like, like terrestrial radio. radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So these are like, these are, you know, I'm assuming. Communication radio. Clever, scientifically yeah. smart people. So immediately after the first five bodies were found, not the four that were found months later. So this is uh, Igor... In order, they're found. Uh, Georgi, Yuri, Igor, Rustam, and Zaneda, those first five, it was concluded that they died from hypothermia, which is understandable because they were left outside. Some of them were almost naked, didn't have the appropriate equipment. With were them. they radioactive? They were not. Okay. I don't believe. Um, they, they, they assume this or theorize this because of the fact that they're outside in shelter. It'll equip and below zero temperatures, which makes total sense, right? Like, that's sure. It is believed this may have come about due to an avalanche causing them to quickly flee their tent. So maybe avalanche happened, they, they couldn't get out, so they cut their way out. Was there any sign of an avalanche? No. Were they on a... Like they were on a mountain, but they weren't like on like a rocky mountain. Like no, a, a it wasn't peak like, yeah, it was like a peak. The was, snow would actually yeah. fall down. It was, so I remember like reading, um, and this is why a lot of people don't think it could have been an avalanche. Which is one because it's not steep enough. In order for avalanche to happen, it needs the slope needs to be thirty degrees or more. Where okay. they were was less than thirty degrees. And also, so the, not enough for their avalanche. Tent is still there. It's not like it's destroyed. Right. Like being yes. Knocked over by it, so that so that's the people are like say so they were like it's, avalanche happened. They had to escape, and they died from hypothermia. Clearly, two of them might have tried to stay alive by keeping warm by a fire, but why didn't they have clothes on? It's not like you're you're sleeping like that. Like some people sleep a certain way, like I mentioned earlier. But like yeah, but you're you're like you're, I, you're not going to be sleeping like that. You're going to be wearing <laughs> yeah. a lot of clothes. Yes, in the mountains. To sleep in the mountains in January, February. In the mountains in Russia. Yeah, I mean, I, like I said, maybe I some they, Russian they, badass. I mean, like they had a heater. Russian people were yeah, they had a heater in there. A lot of people were saying they might they might have got carbon monoxide poisoning and made them go like loopy. But like that was debunked. Um, so the so okay, so they radioactive that. Is that the end of the story? No. 
Okay. So this this is immediately after the five, like this is before they found the four other people. So after the first five that were found, they're like, oh, they could die from hypothermia. Okay. From avalanche, they had escaped their tent and died out the wilderness, unfortunately. Because uh, they, they couldn't escape in time to grab whatever they needed to grab with. And that sounds like it's someone who made up a story to, to satisfy parents on why their kids died or families. Which a lot of people think, yeah. And just because they don't really know, based on like what they saw, they probably don't even know. They're saying this is probably what happened, just to make satisfy everybody. Yeah. And then, and then, and then, like throughout, through even throughout for the next several like decades, there was like the Russian or Soviet uh, government and other Russian government were very like secretive about certain things. They weren't releasing a lot of this information. That might have been because that's a Cold War thing. They don't really want you know their names know what's going on, but like their own people, own Russian citizens, Soviet Union citizens, were wondering like there has to be answers for this. And this came to uh, be once. The remaining four were found because they were found like pretty gruesome, like they had gruesome deaths. So then people start coming up with theories like this avalanche thing couldn't have been the case since some of these people are missing their eyeballs, they're missing their tongue, uh, someone's eyebrows were missing. Uh, so one of the first things it's too cold, man. Yeah, You're just too cold. You don't do these <laughs> things in the cold. So one of the first things that w- that was uh, hypothesized was that it was the Monsi people that attacked them. Maybe they were encroaching on their land. They shouldn't have been where they're supposed to be. So the monsters were upset, attacked them, and killed them. Quickly, this was dismissed because they interrogated some of these people. They didn't. It didn't look like a a physical altercation happened at any point, other than you know cutting yourself out of a tent. But like it didn't look like a hand hand combat was taking place. And plus, again, there was the 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 tracks of just like eight to nine people that they saw. So there would have been other tracks if they were attacked by somebody. So what, what, what are you thinking right now as far as what happened to these people? It's just too damn cold. I mean, it's, <laughs> they're just like, it's too cold, I'm down, I'm out. Uh, yeah. No, I, I really don't. Like, you're bringing up all these, like, different things that could have been, like, you say stuff about re- reactivity in the Soviet government, could have been some type of military thing, some type of something in that realm. <clears throat> uh, could have been, I mean, sounds like pretty good support for a the mon the peep the monsi people monsi monsi people that mis- miscommunication misunderstanding in yeah. the, the night maybe it was or Simeon like it seems like these guys the ones the ones that weren't found by the stream the yeah. other four the, the other five were not like they weren't they died of hypothermia. They weren't yeah. brutally murdered right. type of thing. Right. But then you have these other four, then it seems like stuff went down Very where they weird. were. Yeah, but, circumstances. And, and also this other, this one guy's with them. Mm-hmm. And a girl or woman. So is it some type of jealousy thing or that just kind of got out of hands? Yeah. Or is it a uh, animal's? Right, so I'm like maybe they all they died out of hypothermia, but like yeah. the animals came along and a bear came along. I guess it's the winter, so there are probably not very many bears out. But you know, there's some kind of animals sca- scavenging Wolves. around there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there were some apparently some relationships that were had. Like some of these people used to date each other, as documented in some of the journals. Um, but it was concluded though, again, it's 1959 after they had, like a forensic kind of thing that those the missing eyes and the tongue. We're all post post mortem. Okay, that was, so, that, so again, yeah. wild animal out there probably pecking away at their eyes or like a bird yeah. pecking away at their eyes or something ate their tongue. So the initial uh, the initial official conclusion in 1959 they they all died from a compelling natural force. That's it, a compelling natural force. Natural force, whatever that means. So it's just like a bunch of words they say to yeah. keep people shut like, up. Like this is what we got. A compelling it. Natural force, yes, could be. Would cold be considered a compelling natural force? Yeah, but then how would you get like a broken rib, right? Fractured skull, because okay. like I don't know when that was said, but at one point it was said that as if they were hit, they were in like a severe car accident. The guys that were found by the beach you know, or by the river, the cracked ribs cream. and like the okay. uh, caved in chest. But they're could they have been. They're on a mountain or a yeah. mountain junior. Type yeah, yeah. Like, no, they're, yeah, they're in the mountains. Yeah, yeah. 
And these guys are found 200, 250 feet. The people, yeah, the people that were in the in the ravine were found two hundred fifty feet, and they're down in a ravine. Yeah. So did they? Did the the f- fractures and stuff happen because they fell down the ravine? Maybe. Maybe it was not foul play at all, and it was like people. They, but then, what were they running from? Why right. were they down there? Yeah, and why the need to cut yourself out of a tent? And like, why were they all spread out like that? Why did they have time why to make a fire? Naked? Why yeah. did they have some of them have time to make a fire? Right. And if they're wearing their underwear, how do they make that fire? Because <laughs> there, there was no clothes burning in there. There were so one of the people that took the clothes. Okay, so it's theorized that the two guys that were de- found dead by the fire, their clothes were, were gone. The other three that were found, like in between, like the camp and, and, yeah. the, and the tree line. Yes, the ones that were gone looking back. I th- or was it the other four that were found? Sorry, the last four that were found, it looked like they were wearing the clothes of the people that died by the fire because they were naked. They're not naked. They're in their underwear because some of them had like burn marks on them. Okay. And some of them like one was uh, one of the, one of the females was wearing the pants of one of the males. And that was the the three that were found between the fire and the tent? No, sorry. The um, the, the, the ones ravine, in, the in the ravine. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so they're wearing the guy. Okay, so they. They're, one of them was wearing the clothes of, of or the, all of them were in the clothes. And the guys by the, the fire. Pieces of the clothes okay. of, by the guys that And the guys by the, the fire. fire weren't. They were in their underwear. But they weren't found to be dead by. They didn't have any fractures or anything they could no, see. No. Okay. So like they murdered them, took yeah. their clothes, and jumped on a ravine. So one of the theories, though, again, this is much later on, is done by Yuri, the one that left because he had the 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 joint pain. He believes the Soviet government had something to do with the deaths. Oh, okay. So this is the guy that stuck behind. Stuck yep. back. He went back because he had his M joint pains. Um, he kept his journals and continued writing his journals after this because he's planning on writing a book, apparently. Was there any military facilities around here that they found? Or that is known? So he believes... Okay, so yes. Well, there's speculation on that. Soviet Union. I mean, yeah, there's, yeah, a lot yeah, of, yeah. there's lots of stuff that's... True and not true. Yeah. So shortly following the deaths of his friends, the government came to talk to him to identify some of the things that they found in the camp, like the initial site, saying, do you recognize this? He recognized some things, some things he's like, they wouldn't have had that, like certain skis. But one thing in particular that really stuck out to him was a piece of cloth from a Soviet um, soldier's uniform. And that was found in a tent? Or yeah, on the around, around like the campsite. And Not this, on the people, but like on the, around the campsite. Were any of them soldiers at any time? Except for the guy that was in right. World War II. But yeah. this is probably a modern? Yeah. Okay. Modern piece yeah. of clothing. So he's, that along um, some other things he found there is like, this is, these aren't things they would have had with them. Again, he separated them, I think, he separated with them at the last town. So he probably saw what the last things they bought, saw what they had on them. Yeah. He gave them um, his rations when he turned back. So they can have extra stuff. So he believes something happened. He never publicly said, because I think he had to sign like an NDA thing saying you can't tell us, you know, what you saw. Because again, it's the Soviet Union, so I'm sure there's a lot of secrecy and stuff going around. Because they even- Which is weird. Yeah. Which is where they make, I guess it's a crime scene type of thing. Yeah. But yeah, but like they, maybe the Soviet government didn't know what was at play here. Like Maybe they didn't want to sue the school for like that type of thing. <laughs> like, like- we don't know what happened. You got to sign this thing saying you're not going to go around and tell people what happened. Like start rumors. Yeah. Um, and then lastly, he says that um, he he died. He, so he never said this publicly. He died, I think, only a few years ago. But he says, my like these friends of mine, like they're all experienced. They would know how to exactly deal with an avalanche. So how do they die the way they did? Like he's just like, this isn't see, this, something about it. He's like, just doesn't add up to me. So he thinks Soviet government had something to do with it. Not sure. He didn't really ever say as far as what I saw, like what he thought they did exactly. But he thinks that they were there before at the site, before like the rescue. People so he was there before the guys found the, discovered yeah. the camp. Before, like, okay. The students found the camp. Why, why that is, he didn't, he didn't never said, but he thinks something was fishy was going on the Soviet government. Okay. Um, so they, they, okay, continue. It, <laughs> this is like, there's a lot, there's a lot here. Uh, there were reports of orange flashing lights going on in the region. 
Um, orange flashing lights by who? Like people live in the region. In, in this area, yeah, like okay. 30 miles, up to like 30 miles away. From it, was that mentioned in any of the journals? Uh, I don't know. I can't remember if it was one of the journals, but apparently one of the pictures, someone took a picture oh, that okay. was found of that. I think they might have mentioned the journals. Some that saw us thought as like might have saw as a bad omen, not necessarily had anything to do with the, the people doing the trek. Uh, others believe that would have been aliens, but they would. So these are all theories of common theories of what, what this, these orange flashes yeah. were. Uh, so maybe aliens had something to do with their disappearance and, and their death. Others, though, this is, seems like a pretty popular one, based on what you're not necessarily what you're saying, but based on around that realm of the government being about something. Believe that there was a secret Soviet West weapons testing ground, possibly nuclear, that they might have stumbled upon when they got lost. Because again, they had to stop in the middle of the night because the wind got really bad, the snow got really bad, visibility dropped. They lost. They they ventured off the route they had planned. So they, they might have stumbled upon a testing facility of some kind by the Soviet Union. But it wasn't possibly there when nuclear. the other guys showed up. Yeah. So these guys. Show up and find this place. They find the bodies and are there for a while. Yeah. And they don't find any nuclear, or they don't find any testing well, they facility. Might have, the idea is that they 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 killed them and then dropped them back off, made it look like, you know, so they were there. Okay. something happened. So they find yeah. the bodies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not like this facility, facility just disappeared or anything like that. Because, I mean, if they found, if they found tracks going out from the camp and everything, mm-hmm. did they find the tracks of them getting to the camp? I don't. I can't remember. No, I, don't, I can't remember. Because they even still I guess like. Because these people had to be the people that found them had to be helicoptered in. Like and even like getting in a snowmobile, getting there is like people are trying to to reenact what some of the things might have happened. Like as far as avalanches, like snowmobiles were turning over. Apparently, all these weird occurrences happened. Of like people, other nine people died at some point, or like in like a plane crash, but they survived somehow in this general area around this dead mountain where the. Dead, the dead mountain that they they came across. So they people. There's like a superstition of like bad things happening around this area. Okay. So a- be, after after this. So this isn't people this. looking for the other. No, no, no. Okay. Sorry. This, this is just a separate. People trying to reenact and see what happened. Um, but as far as them stumbling upon this testing ground, maybe they saw something they're supposed to do. So the Soviet soldiers killed them, moved their bodies elsewhere, or saw something they weren't supposed to. Yeah. Or if this was a missile like testing site, maybe. A missile struck them. Like a missile range. Yeah. Like maybe something like they were struck by a missile. Maybe that's why people saw orange they lights. They blew their clothes off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's one of the newest yeah, yeah, missiles yeah. that's so it's you invented. It right off. Just so you blows keep your, your clothes on. off. You don't, want to, you don't want to make embarrass you too much. You keep yeah. your underwear on, you know. But yeah, That maybe, would be an awesome but people, missile. But people are like, oh, that explains. That's maybe, like a party like, missile. <laughs> that's what that is. If the, if the Soviets invented that, <laughs> the Cold War would end a yeah. lot differently. <laughs> it shoots vodka in your veins and yeah. just like blows your clothes off. I would have been totally down with that. Yeah. Maybe that, like people are saying, maybe mes- not necessarily the missile hit them directly, but like it, it caused an explosion, but threw their bodies over like, I don't know. But people saw uh-huh. these orange. Yeah, people saw these orange. Party lights. missiles coming. <laughs> people saw these orange it's, lights and like, they thought you know they're trying to make speculation. It possible. comes down when it drops out of the plane. It, it just instead of doing a, sh- it, it's like technical. <laughs> 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 oh no! Party missile. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We need to invent that. We need to buy. We need to buy a missile. Right. Figure out how to make it blow people's clothes off. <laughs> so yeah, that, I mean that that could possibly explain, you know, damage to like their bodies. But like again, like you said. How, why would they? Why would they not have clothes on if they? Were yeah. Like, why would that? Incin- why would it not incinerate them? Right. But then maybe the Soviets were like, oh, this missile like but it, hit where it wasn't supposed but to. But radioactivity was on the one bodies, right? Right. So maybe okay. this missile wasn't supposed to, but like, let's move their bodies around, make it look like someone else happen. I, don't, I know it's like it's far fetched, but these are some like the, the theories. Some theories. Yeah. There's some weirder ones that I, I'm not going to go over all of them, but um, uh, going back to cameras being found. There was a photo found on um, one of their the the trekkers cameras. So Simeon, his Simeon's uh, camera was stuck in water, like he's laying face down the okay. ravine. So a lot of the stuff that they were able to develop was either too blurry or anything like that. You didn't really see much from it. But one of them, I believe, it was Nikolai's camera. Uh, had a picture was developed on it, and it had a blurry black silhouette of an image of something like the bipedal like a person like a person so like one or, of them 
because apparently the, the, a, a documentary was done about this. A Yeti. <laughs> the abominable snowman. Who blows your clothes <laughs> off. Blows Just your rips clothes your clothes off, off and then leaves yeah. you alone. Yeah. Picks your eyes out, eats your tongue. Rips, you know, takes your clothes off, rips your clothes off, and just like, eh, goes about his way. I don't know. He punches you hard, just yeah. just so hard, your but, clothes fly off. But like, uh, like people have looked at this hard evidence as like the Yeti exists and it's in the Euro Mountains and you know. But this is just a, a silhouette, like type of thing. Yeah, and I, I I remember I found. We'll put some of these up. Um, I found a website, and they posted some of the pictures that were taken by the, by the uh, by everybody again. Everything would seem happy, and then all of a sudden, like, you know, they're dead. It shows pictures of, like, what the, their bodies look like. They're taken by people that found them. But I think I think the one they were talking about is clearly was a man just who was, who was part of their group. They are just, like, messing around. Because they even found in the tent fake newspaper clippings that, that they apparently wrote about the abominable snowman being found. So, like, it was kind of a jokingly kind of thing that okay. people are saying that, like, the guy might have like they took a picture of this guy joking around like he's a bombable snowman. This is about the, the okay. So I'm gonna just switch something. I want. I just want to say this one thing. This is something probably the dumbest thing I'll ever say. <laughs> and it just we're still young, man. Yeah. I I've been sitting here waiting to hear about when they start eating each other. <laughs> so. <laughs> And so that's <laughs> no, not this story. No, no. That's the other people. Do you remember, uh, well, that's the, the was it Donner? Or, and then there's so that the movie. So, uh, this made me think of the movie Alive. Do you ever see the movie Alive where yeah. those like rugby players, they crash yeah. and like the Alps and have to eat each other? I've read Hatchet. Is that, uh, that? <laughs> is that the same thing? No. So Donner Party isn't the Otlov people. What's that? The Donner Party wasn't the, this these Russian people. No, no, no. I was sitting there waiting, like, when are they going to start eating each other? <laughs> so that's probably the stupidest thing I've ever done in my life up to this point. No, but, like, I mean, it makes me think of that because, like, yeah, I didn't know, I didn't know, like, the, from the time they got stranded, like, stranded to the time they died, like, it's only a matter of, like, maybe 48 hours. But, like, the Donner part, I didn't know that when I first saw about it, I was like, oh, they're definitely going to eat each other. Someone else is eating someone else's butt cheek like they did, not you know. I Yeah. Like I thought media. maybe the Donner Party was actually in Russia, and I just didn't know. <laughs> it was, it's in the United States. <laughs> yeah. It's like the Berenstain Bears went to Russia or went to, like, the worst Berenstain Bears book ever. The Donner Party go, of Russia. They go yeah. to Russia. Yeah, that would be a good movie. No, I mean, that you're not. The Donner Party 2. <laughs> Electric Boogaloo. The Yeti. Yacht Love Pass 2. Yeah. The Yeti comes out and just throws a party. But it's not crazy. Party I thought for sure at some point someone's going to eat somebody. Yeah. But I guess it didn't happen. Uh, but I strictly was thinking that because I thought it was the other group. Uh, okay. Gotcha. I gotcha. didn't think, not because I had figured like, yeah, it's yeah. one of those stories where they just eat each other and it's cold. <laughs> yeah, whatever. But like, I literally thought this was the Donner Party until yeah. Yeah. it just clicked in my head. These aren't the same people. But go no. ahead. Sorry. Continue. Theories. So that's the Yeti one. That's silly. But a lot of people like basis like, oh, there's a proof the Yeti exists, but. I don't think, no. If the, if the picture I saw is the right one, it just, it's, it's clearly a guy in his cold gear. His bloomers. Just, <laughs> just being goofy. Okay. So, so it was just uh, one of the people. One of the people that was part of the, part of the group. That's what I think. But I'll, I'll, I want to circle back to, as to why Semyon was selected to go. Because he wasn't picked by Igor and his friends. The he was assigned to them. He was assigned to them. Was he like in charge of making sure they did the, the that they said so they get level three? I didn't see anything like that, so I don't know. But, but like, he, they're not I, just gonna be like, "Oh, you guys made it, really?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or did you just go sit behind that tree for three weeks? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can, you do need some kind of. Was like, he part of like the governing body that says you're level three now? He he, from my saw, he's just an athletic teacher at the university, so it's possible that he's like sat chaperone. Look over them and maybe. Yeah, I guess if you're if there's university sending a bunch of people out, like they're not gonna. I mean, this is in in our world, today's world. Yeah. Like they're not just gonna like just let them go. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. Like that's not how things go. Yeah. But maybe I don't know if it's something that's like has some kind of certification involved, like that type of thing should be yeah. someone be there to. Like, so maybe he was. But just I think one this is also a time in, in the Soviet Union, like where like, you know, they're they're making advancements and they're trying to push forward not only like the space race but like human endurance and like what man can do and right. like what what obstacle man's can man can, what can we can overcome yeah, yeah. What humans can over over uh come but yeah so I, he very well could have been a chaperone he, or he could have been someone who was like actually making sure they did what they're supposed to do but it just seemed kind of odd that 
He was assigned to this He was group. assigned to this thing, yeah. So there's a theory that suggests that he was selected to go by the KGB because he was a former um, person in the military during person, World yeah. War II. But he was assigned along with another member of the group, and this is actually true. Uh, Grigori, or Georgi, Georgi? Uh, he had previously, before this trip, several years before this, this, this expedition, he helped clear up a radioactive leak at a secret Soviet nuclear facility. And that, that, is, that is true. That was like, he took part in cleaning up a leak that happened at a is secret that why there was, Soviet facility. Is that why there was nuclear waste or nuclear stuff? Because he just I had mean, it on him still? That's what I, that's, I mean, it's possible. I mean, they would have been smart enough to clean that stuff up, up though. Yeah, but then maybe like he kept the, I mean, he would have not have worn his actual clothes yeah. there, but I don't know, who knows? Or was there here, the thing I think about when you say that about the radioactivity? And, you keep on coming back to that. And apparently, hold on. Apparently, that 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 cleanup that you took part in was like almost to the level of like Chernobyl. Okay. Is was the stream radioactive from some type of runoff from? You know, because like even in even there's plenty of cities around even America that they had yeah. enrichment facilities that are still radioactive to this day, or like they tried to clean them up and. I mean, the water may have been just, if this is far enough in the mountains, they may have had a military facility that was enriching oh, so yeah, I mean, yeah, uranium yeah, yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah they're, yeah, they're passing all kinds of minerals that might have had like some sort of interaction yeah. or like right. contamination. But the other guys weren't contaminated though. The other five weren't. No, they just found it on, on a pair of clothes, not on an actual person. Oh, okay. Like, so this uh, is just one of the clothes that someone was wearing, okay. yeah. Uh, so he he had helped clean up clean up a nuclear secret nuclear facility. Um, the, the it suggested they were both hired by the KGB, put put in with this group. They're supposed to meet up with the CIA with CIA agents in the Ural, Ural Mountains, Ural, Ural, take and take pictures of CIA agents while handing over fake sensitive information. Wait, this is who said this? This is a theory. Okay. Uh, and it went south, and the CIA ended up killing everyone. I mean, in the fifty, in the Cold War, yeah. it's always going to be the CIA is the reason why something goes espionage. Out. You know, they're going to yeah. use it. I mean, the same side, we, same thing that happened in America. We used that. To oh, of course, scare yeah. our yeah. citizens. They did the same yeah. thing. I mean, stuff like that did happen, though. Yeah, I mean, I'm not yeah. saying it didn't, but obviously, that's going to be one of the main theories. So that they use yeah, both yeah. sides, use yeah. whatever they can to scare each other. Yeah, anything, any kind of mystery or something that's not fully understood during this time, I feel like that's always. Something thrown out there, like for both espionage, yeah, yeah, both sides for sure. And then, just, so this starts getting, we're going to start getting a little more credible things. Uh, on July eleventh, twenty twenty, the Earl's Federal District, Earl Federal District, where all this happened. This is like part of this this area. What year was this? Uh, twenty twenty. Okay. Uh, they included in a study that avalanche was the official cause of death. But again, however, some people deny this because there's no traces traces of an avalanche happening. Yeah, they're not under an avalanche. Yeah, they're all just hanging out. <laughs> it's like the fat, like the avalanche, like came and left. <laughs> just a ghost avalanche. I I would believe more that it was the party missile than it was an avalanche. <laughs> which TM. <laughs> but in 2021, so only a few years ago, two Swedish scientists and their team found strong evidence that supported an avalanche. Different kind of al- avalanche. Based on a series of models they Fake ran. Fake avalanche. <laughs> they ran. It's one of those non-avalanches. Never happened. <laughs> Using photos from, from the site. And not a nun yeah avalanche. Historical records. Uh, it was a slab avalanche that happened, which I've never even heard never of. We just make this up. A nun yeah avalanche. <laughs> nun yeah business. So I said, when I said earlier, the 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 crew, like the 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 trekkers, uh, they dug into the side of the mountain slope okay. at night in order to, to brace themselves from the wind. The, pressure the, from the snow. Wind. Yeah. Inside they of, weren't digging dirt. They were digging the snow. snow yeah. And the side of the slope of the, of the mountain. In doing so, they must have caused a chain reaction resulting in this type of avalanche. Snow kept building. Wind kept blowing. And eventually snow slabs started to slide and then eventually falling onto the tent, which then eventually crushed the tent. But... 
then magically disappear whenever he showed up a couple days later, weeks later to find. Well, because there's 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 like the idea. I'm not, I'm not doing this justice. There's a lot of signs that I, the, I I'll post so, the resources. So this, the thing they dug, yeah, so there causes are, the snow to yeah, because of what they did by digging in, they cause like a, a chain reaction to happen over time. So they dug in the side of this mountain on a slant. There's a space here or like the tents right here. And doing so, snow kept building because it kept, kept snowing, wind kept blowing. So the, basically sheets of snow or slabs kept slowly f- sliding down. There was enough of, there is enough of an angle, not 30 degrees, but enough of an angle. It built up a deep, a steeper angle. Yeah, it kept making it worse, worse, and worse. And then snow, and they're sleeping during this time, I'm assuming. Snow kept falling, sliding on top of the tent, making it more weighty, give it more weight, eventually like causing the tent to give way and eventually in time i think this is something that's supposed to happen over like several hours maybe more there's there's enough weight that would just collapse a tent crushing the people on the inside some of the people on the inside which might explain freaking out and the 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 cracked skull the ribs so they're theorizing though that this happened the ones who were injured were dragged away by the people that weren't injured and thrown off the cliff. <laughs> when they, I say, re, like, I think they when they drag say, they're like, oh, screw yeah, it. I think when they say ravine, it's not like a, you know, a cliff side. It's like a small, like kind of like bed, Either way. Like, like a, like a Creek bed or something like they're that. They're just like dragging but, away. But they were right. dragged away to safety out of the, like this from things getting worse. Um, some who might've been injured were put by the fire. The fire was lit okay. for them. Yeah. And these other guys walk back yeah. to get this, to get try some to, stuff. Try to get back, maybe to get some stuff. Um, and then the guys that died by the fire, their clothes were taken so the other people could survive. Because at this point, their tent was caved in, along with all their equipment to dig it out. And that would be enough force that they claimed would have been equal to a um, like a car accident on some of these people. When it, when it finally hit them. When it finally just caved in on them. Enough snow, enough weight. They said that, like they said in the article that I was reading that the science article that the, these these two Swedes did that like it's as if someone just kept taking snow from one spot and just dumping it on another spot and just eventually just kept piling up, piling up and just crushed their tent and pe- people inside. Some but, of the people, but inside. the tent was still there when they it was, but it was, it was crushed. It was under snow, so that like they the guy that found him, Mikhail, had to dig the tent out because with the equipment uh, he had. That makes sense now. Yeah. But my question is though, why like? Why, why were some of them like? N- why were they? Some of them didn't even have clothes on in the first place. Well, you said they maybe the guys by the fire gave it to the other ones going back. Yeah, but who who else didn't have clothes on? Just those two. I think it was just those two. But there's uh, something I came across like. I mean, they're Russian. They're badass. They're just probably <laughs> sleeping like that. Like <laughs> we don't need blankets or anything or clothes at night. Yeah. So that's a, that's just a theory of why the clothes might have been like taken from the, from the dead. Right. They might have not had clothes on to begin with. It seems like. But well, why? But if they had to take the clothes from the dead, were they people? Were they not wearing clothes on either? Yeah, I mean, I guess that's that'd be right. So why? Or do they have double clothes on? Well, maybe. But then why wouldn't they be wearing clothes? That's what I find odd. So I found something. I came across something. I don't know. It's called paradoxical undressing. Paradoxical undressing. It's something that happens when hypothermia. With hypothermia, I have heard of that. Yeah, where you're, 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 you get so cold, and something happens with the, I think, viscosity of your blood or something like that. I didn't look too much into it. It was like I don't know that your, 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 your body can, confu- your brain confuses your, your body confuses your brain into thinking that you're hot, so you take your clothes off. I've heard of that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes that, that might be why they left the tent without any clothes on because it might have been at a time they were like they're in the tent thinking this is in combination with the crushing yeah, thing yeah i think so yeah so okay i mean that that's seems i only found one thing talking about that as a, as a possibility i was like oh that's all i got man so what do you think is the most likely scenario of what happened to these i people? would say the avalanche would be unlikely but <clears throat> next to the yeti and the, the party missile yeah. i think those are the most <laughs> unlikely um but i think the the crushing now that you explain it like like the way that the snow piled up over time yeah. and that it can crush them especially if they're stuck here for a couple of days or a day or two yeah 
Makes sense. I don't know why they're all strewn about. Like, how did the other four get down by the river? Did so they try to run away? So those were the, those are the ones that are most injured. So I'm thinking that they were dragged furthest away from it since they're like, or they, or were they just like in shock and they were frozen like in, into the woods where they get more coverage because like there's remember there's like tree lines so they went further into the woods I for believe for the wind or something yeah for more protection I'm guessing yeah it just seems like those four. Maybe they wandered off after the other ones left and the two guys by the fire died or something. Like, yeah. Or maybe they didn't actually feel their – because you're frozen. Like you're yeah. so cold, maybe they didn't actually feel getting those injuries. And that, that, that did see some people talking about like you don't really realize what, like, what happened to your body. Yeah. yeah, you're in shock. And maybe yeah. they took off to get water. Maybe they took off to go. They knew like, oh, if we go this way, this is the, tent, the tents are over here. Yeah. They were confused. Sure. I do like I, – I mean it seems like the uh, – the radioactive issue is kind of just like a coincidence. Yeah, but like we're like we're why was maybe the, maybe the Simeon or whatever his name was 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 it him that was radioactive or the whole group? I didn't I, I didn't see who had the so maybe he was clothes. working in a lab that had radioactive material in it, and so it just so happened that he wore those clothes on the trip. I think that's kind of like a thing. It's just kind of like it's a coincidence. We don't really know, but I think now that you say like it's just a series of unfortunate events of like. It was probably happening so fast. It was dark out. Everybody's disoriented. They're trying to help each other. Yeah. But at the same time, not realizing how disoriented they are. Right. It's so cold, so windy, so much snow. I mean, snow during the day when it's a blizzard in America is like yeah. a nightmare. <laughs> and and we're not, I mean, you go up into Russia and like the northern parts of Russia where they seem to be in the mountains. Yeah. And are in a blizzard. It, blackout conditions and at, at night. I mean, it has to be so disorienting. Oh, my God. Yeah. You can't see anything. Like how would they even especially know since, what way like, they came? I mean, I'm guessing they like they left. It looked like they left all their equipment, like like flashlights. They just ran. They just ran. So it had to be something so extreme, like they had to cut themselves out. But even if they had the paradoxical undressing, are they so de- like that their brain isn't thinking about grabbing a tool with them, or yeah. don't even go out the door, just cut yeah. out? So maybe it was a common. I don't think, I guess, now when you say it like that, you really think about it. Paradoxical undressing makes sense. But then you realize like a like, shock to your body or something like that. They had to be so they disoriented the- that they cut themselves out. So they cutting themselves out to get out of the tent. Right. Makes sense on the avalanche side. And, and now that you're saying that it's like this slab avalanche. Yeah. It seems like that needs more research. Yeah, it's like a, like a sheet. There's a kind of slowly, and they just kind of then this one builds on top of that one. This one builds on top of that one. Um, they dug their own grave, kind yeah, of thing. Like yeah, they just like, kind of like, caused. Oh, when I saw that, I was like, "Oh, that sucks," because they were doing what they they were taught to do by digging in to yeah. the side like that. But people didn't think at that time avalanches were prevalent in that area, so they didn't think that would be an issue. Or that that or that that avalanche thing was a th- with that slab avalanche yeah. thing probably was right. so rare. Yeah. But this is so I so like I'm I'm totally I think that's kind of is what sells me is this this because like genuine science is done and like uh, to arrive at this conclusion. But I keep going back to when that the student Mikhail found looked inside the tent. He said like their shoes were like neatly piled together. It looked like food had just been cutting. Like they weren't ready to eat dinner. They took off right away. Yeah, like it was almost like inst- like we got to go. Yeah. It, it was, you, you, you think like they realized their, their tent was being crushed at some point? Maybe it all happened at the same time. Yeah. Like the snow built up on itself. Yeah. They kind of like had their own like little cove and the snow was building up on top and eventually it just came down when enough got piled on yeah. top of that. Yeah. Because it was creating like, yeah. a, like, a, like, a, like a shell over the okay. tent. Okay. Maybe. So they dug in. The slabs are coming down like they say. Here's their tent. Yeah. And then eventually it's piling up this way and eventually this – rounded area that they dug out gives way. But again, I, I have no idea because it'd be so specific to that situation. Yeah. That you have to be there to actually understand it right. or know. Yeah. And apparently they, they, they looked, they looked at the uh, pictures that were taken to, to get, try and get the best idea or the most specific spot of where their tent was. And, like they get the weather conditions right when they did these models. Um, yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know, man. Like, it's such a specific thing to happen. Like the right things have to happen. Or the, wrong, has, or the any, wrong things. Or the wrong things. I want to I would want to see if there's any instances of this happening again 
the same situation, like these slab things. Have they, yeah. Are they known? Yeah. Yeah, they're known to happen, but like I, I don't think it's a common thing. Right. Like the the situation has to be perfect. Yeah. Like right. It's kind of like everything has to be the That's right way. Like the, the wind has to be drilling a certain way. The, yeah. the snow had to be piling up yeah. a certain way. Thickness, yeah, they water content. Yeah, they look like the weather forecast to like figure this stuff out. And like, so it's like a perfect storm of everything. I would want to know to how they did. I would want rather, I would really want to know how those four got down away from the fire. Yeah. how did they start that fire? So there's two, there's two down by the fire. Yeah. But how'd they start that fire originally? Cause it looks like the three went left the fire to go back and get supplies. Who started that fire and how did someone have, I guess someone had to have had something on them. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, I mean, if the other ones are I'm, closed. I'm assuming, I'm assuming they know to like start a fire. Like I said, they, there's, there's a branch next or like a, but the then the paradoxical undressing doesn't make sense then. Right. Because then they'd be too hot to oh, start yeah, a fire. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe the ones who had clothes are like, no, dude, you, you, you're you going to freeze to death. You're almost naked. Let's start your fire. Right. But stay here. We're going to go. Yeah. But it was where those two that were by the fire, they didn't have clothes on. I, I, and Sasquatch is here. So they, we're And not. they didn't, they didn't have, a, from my perspective, they didn't have any injuries to them, I don't believe, right? Is, is that I, don't, I don't, I didn't hear any. I just heard the guys by the, the, the river and the one guy with the head trauma. Yeah, both were just in their underwear and dead by a campfire. Well, this is a long one, so I'm going to say <laughs> thank you, Jordan, for bringing us to our attention, giving yeah. us a little peep into the world of Dyatlov Pass. It is... I mean, I, when you said Diablo Pass, I knew what it was as far as like, I knew there was something that went down. People yeah. died hiking like, and, and, and I knew it was cold. Yeah. Um, I know the exact story and all <laughs> the different, cold. I know it was cold. It's a cold place. <laughs> I know the coldness. Um, but there's also, you know, the whole story about, I didn't under, know about all the other specifics of the different theories and, and where they were found spread yeah, out. That's, that's, yeah, that's weird. And the injuries and the, the that one guy that, you know. I didn't know about the party missile. It's a cool thing. Yeah. Who knows a thing? That's awesome. Yeah. I've got to buy one of those. Um, so I want to say thank you to everybody for listening. Thank you, Jordan, for the story again. Thank you to our, uh, to the band, uh, yes. Bethlehem yes. for our theme music. Yeah. Uh, there's a link in the show notes, link in the, uh, however you're watching this in the description and the show notes, uh, uh, link to their music. And I think at the end uh, it's, it's some music you hear at the beginning and the end of the show. We have um, social media up and running uh, so far, just Facebook and Twitter. Twitter, yeah. Or X or whatever it's called now. So stupid. We are we have um, YouTube up and running. We have all of our links on the – and if you go to the mysteriouspals.com, it takes you directly to our link tree, which That's then – all the podcasts. Links to platform. any – like every podcast platform, which if you're listening to the podcast, you would know – what podcast you're using but if you're on youtube um, there's links to youtube links to our social media uh any other information that you would want to know how to get in contact with us our email address is in the uh, description or in the show notes especially all of our all of the resources you yes. use today yeah, is yeah. there as well um to follow up with any of that if you're interested and next week we'll be back will be a spooky Ooh, yeah. spooky day spooky, for halloween day for halloween yeah. especially it's going to go up um, it'll be a good one. Based on learning how things get posted and, and everything, <laughs> it'll be around the day before Halloween or the day of Halloween at some point. But again, I want to say thank you to everybody for tuning in. Yeah, thanks, Mom. And and, <laughs> and we will be back next week with another episode. That episode is a mystery. So again, thanks, Mom. Thanks, Joey's Mom. <laughs> This has been the Mysterious Pals. We love you and thank you and good night. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>